Hello everyone and welcome to a let's play of Rome Total War as the Numidians. My name is Volant and I'm going to be playing through on very hard, very hard. Um, arcade style battles? Nope. Man Jules elements? No, because that'll make it more difficult. And I like it when it's difficult. Full AI characters? Yeah, I want to be able to see if I've got an army sneaking up on me. No battle time limit? I'm going to leave that off because sometimes the AI bugs out or because sometimes they just camp and it's ridiculous, so... I think this is all set. Here's the description of the faction. Oh yeah, this is Darth Mod. This is a... The Darth Mod is a, a kind of gameplay tweak. It isn't an overhaul. It just tweaks a lot of aspects of the gameplay and makes the game more, I think, well-rounded. Slightly better. It makes an already good game better, I think. Right. The Numidians. It says here, I think this is... This is according to the guy that made the mod, because in the original game I don't think the Numidians are a playable faction. Or if they are, they're very rough. Yeah, they're not. I don't think they're designed to be played through an, a full Imperial campaign. Okay, so... The Numidians could very well be the most difficult faction to play as in Darth Mod 7.0. They are only for the veterans amongst us, and also I'm playing on very hard, very hard to make it even more difficult. I think that's just for normal. Um, their lands are poor, being mostly in the desert, they have to contend with the might of Carthage. Consolidate your small selection of provinces and grow them to a higher level. Ally with those you can and will turn on them when you are positive, you are ready. Yeah, so... This this faction calls for quite desperate measures, they are. This is Numidia here, North Africa. To the west of Egypt, who are around there, and this is Carthage. And then... The Spanish, I think you come up against them after you defeat Carthage. Okay, there's going to be a cutscene. I'm ready to start. I think I've said everything. If there's anything I forgot, I'll I'll continue during the actual campaign. See you after the cutscene. Before my grandfather's grandfather was born, this was our land. These are good places. Our gods live here, in the trees and rivers. They watch over us. We are happy. We hunt. We love. We have families, homes, a good life. But sometimes we must fight. The Romans disturb the gods. They burn the forests. They take what is ours, wives, children, land. The Romans talk of how they will help us and protect us. They put us to sleep with golden promises. When we wake, all we had is gone, stolen. They take our sons and turn them into little Romans. Ah! So we fight to keep what is ours. What must stay ours? There can be no peace. No peace with Romans, men of stone and iron and lies. There can be only war. Okay, well, that was clearly not the the Numidians. I think that's just a generic intro for barbarian factions. Okay, here we are. If you're wondering why I'm playing as the Numidians, you know, a, a landlocked, faraway faction in the middle of the desert, it's because they are the hardest faction. I'm actually playing as them on the suggestion of a friend. His name is Alpha Pi Omega. He also d does uh, Let's Plays, mostly Grand Strategy, and he'll be doing some Total War in the future. He suggested that... Yeah, he offered to challenge me to play as whichever faction he picked, and in return I'd be able to do the same for him when he plays Rome Total War using EB mod, Europa Barbarorum. So, I thought, why not? I like a challenge. So, we have... Here we are, North Africa. We have... One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 wait, five factions? Five provinces, I mean? Yeah, that's not much. Okay. Let's see the family tree. Yeah, if you've watched any of my previous Total War Let's Plays, which has only so far been Shogun 2, you'll know that I am... When I play Total War, I tend to be very meticulous, pay attention to detail, 
micromanage everything and I'm probably going to be doing the same thing for this and any future Rome Total War Let's Plays. Okay, so our, our faction leader is 60 years old. He's a commander, has no management skills whatsoever. Uh, faction leader, good commander. Yeah, he actually should have management, but it's negated by astrologer. Fucking astrology. He's 60 years old, so he's going to die soon, so fuck investing any time in making him worthwhile. The faction heir is 35. Gizgo. His brother is 30 years old. And the youngest sibling is 14. So he will come of age soon. So we have a commander who's about to die, faction leader. A faction heir who's also quite competent. But he can manage as well, I think. Yay. 10% bonus in trade income. And someone else, he should probably be the heir because he's got 4 influence. Yeah, okay, so we've got like 3 family members, that's that's quite shit. I need more than that. What I normally like to do is put one in every single every single town and then micro the towns so they become very adept at managing. But it doesn't look like I can do that yet. Oh yeah. You always if you don't know how to do tax rates, you'll learn. That's something I I am good at. So the default is to have here's the synopsis of how you manage taxes in Rome Total War and at least Medieval Two Total War as well. You always have the taxes on low, and then when a building or a structure is about to be completed, you put put it to very high on that exact turn. So that the turn that the building is completed, the taxes were on very high, and then you put it back down to low. The benefits of this is that your generals become benevolent and kind, you know, um, wise rulers because they have low taxes, so they're not strict, cruel, and also they become efficient at managing money because when the building is completed, taxes run very high. So that's what you'll see me doing when I go from town to town, changing the tax rates, some apparently arbitrarily, probably. Okay, that's, that's another thing I need to check. The buildings, the shrines. This is one of the biggest decisions you can make when you're building your empire. What, what kind of temple your town has. So Tanit has food production. Val has law, so that's just purely for maintaining public order. And Milkart has trade. Yeah. So coastal settlements will have this, and faraway settlements that I just want to keep from rebellion will have Baal. And all the landlocked ones will have farms, Tanit. That's the first thing I normally do. Let's let's have a look at this. So current farm income in the settlement province is 272 and then it goes up to uh, that doesn't go up right now that's strange try this one nope yeah okay let's let's assess each one on an individual basis and decide which which it shall have hmm Yeah, if a uh, province doesn't have a governor, I'm going to just leave them like this, if they don't have a governor. Growth. Yeah, okay. And now, what else was I going to do? Oh yeah, finance. So we have a net loss of 231. The way you figure that out is the projected profits subtracted the recruitment and construction. Yeah. Everything else is overheads. Recruitment and construction is what you're actually spending on a turn-to-turn -turn basis. Okay, so save. I want to spend all the money manually. I think you have to check that though, so just to be safe. Okay, so we have Carthage at the north. They're allies, although I'm going to transgress that and attack them as soon as possible. Move out! Oh, that's something I really need to do. I need to look at the units and see what we have, what is what is useful, what is not. Okay, Numidian Javelin Men. Numidian Javelin Men. Yeah, okay, so what I look at when I'm trying to assess a unit is 
Troop quality divided by upkeep, and Numidian Javelinmen seem pretty good. Very good stamina, good morale, effective against armor. Yeah, upkeep 110, that's that's like two thirds of a unit of Hastati, that's pretty good. Um, desert infantry, these seem to just be line infantry that just hold the line. Sponge fodder. Okay, so these units are all good, so I'll be making use of all of these. These have phalanx, medium spearmen. Uh, cavalry stables. Numidian cavalry. 90 upkeep for skirmishing cavalry, that's fucking good. Okay, yeah, those. Long shield cavalry. Yeah, these are the medium cavalry, they're good. And Numidian caval camel riders, that's... Yeah, these are light anti-cavalry cavalry, so yeah. So far, all the units are good. Uh, archers, uh, sort of shit. I think I'd rather have this, the javelin men, Arabian archers. Well, these are actually better than the generic unit. They're cheaper and better. Whoa. <laughs> okay, slingers. No, slingers are shit. Vastly inferior to Arabian archers. Okay, so the unit to stay away from is Slingers. Actually, why did I disable that? Shit, that's just a habit. Okay, so let's have a look. Alright, Slingers, we don't want these. General's bodyguard. No general, but a bodyguard. That's a bit strange. Okay. So the Egyptians are to the east and the Carthaginians are to the north, so that's where all the troops will be going. Okay, that province is angry, so... Shit. I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to appease them, actually. That. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna be making use of saves. I'm not gonna quick save or quick load. That's kind of cheating, I think. If I'm gonna, if I want a challenge at least. You know, slingers, get rid of them. And this town here, Lepsis Magna, that's a coastal province, so that will have milk cart for trade. And also put the taxes to very high, even though the public order is now in the, in the red, that's worth it. Also, it's a faction leader who's about to die, so if he dies, nothing of value is lost. Okay. Actually, no. Nah, I'm gonna have to just take all of this shit off, and I'm gonna have to manually manage all these promises. It'd be a lot easier if I had more family members, but I don't, so fuck. Orders. Yeah, alright, so this army here, this is what I'm gonna use to attack the Carthaginians. Skirmishing cavalry and skirmishers. Brilliant. But they have mostly heavy infantry and cavalry, so that should be okay, I should be able to deal with that. Can always use mercenaries if I'm desperate. Okay. I really hate building things when there's no general there to make use of the bonuses that are given when a building's completed. Okay, this is a farming. Actually, wait. This can be the new capital because it's at the centre of the empire. And as a consequence, this one is now red. So, ballot is for this one. This one is Milkart. This one is Milkart as well. And this one, Tanit. That seems good. My liege. My liege. I'm gonna have to just say fuck it and... Yeah, actually I should have just... Orders, march. I'm gonna unite those two and bring them down here. Group up with this. General's bodyguard has an upkeep of 80, that's quite cheap for a unit of heavy cavalry. Yeah, I'm going to keep that. Um, I think I could maybe take on the Egyptians with this crappy little army here. If I combine it with that one. So I'm going to go with that just now. These units are estranged. I'm not going to... Oh yeah, yeah, here's something to note. The recruitment cost divided by the upkeep cost for this unit is like one and a half. So that's like one and a half turns. That's how far this unit will get before it's cost itself in terms of recruitment using upkeep, so 
disband. Wait, actually, I'm gonna. I might have to keep this so I can. Yeah, this is good. If you have very high tax rate with 75% order or 80%, I think you get a bonus to management. You get a few traits, or you get a roll for a few traits, which is good. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave that unit there until I can afford to disband it. Okay, every town I think is building. I don't need to spend any more money, I don't need to recruit any more units. All my forces are... Well, apart from this here. Okay, I'm gonna disband. No wait, these have got 2 XP, so I'm gonna send these forward to catch up with this army which has infantry, so yeah, it will catch up. Then I'm gonna disband this. 80%. Okay, this is good. So, regroup these army, group up those armies, group up these ones. That army goes north, this one goes east, regroups with this one. And then I attack the Carthaginians and the Egyptians, this seems like it could be good. Okay, let's, let's go. Oh yeah, I have an SSD, that's why the loading times are so, so good. Okay, let's see what the net gain is. That's something I need to figure out. Profits of 1.6k. Yeah, per turn, that's good. I can definitely use that if I've only got like five provinces. Okay, this town is expanded. So I'm gonna build that. Um, construction report. Yeah. I'm gonna build roads. Actually, I'm going to keep this one. Yeah, see that there? Tax Assessor. He got that because he had 75% while a building was completed and while taxes were very high. So he got a massive... Yeah, that's, a, that's quite a big boon. That's 10%. If only he wasn't 60 years old, he's, he's going to die and lose that really soon. So, oh well. Um, milk cart. No, tannet. Yeah. Yeah, everything looks good so far. Okay, so this army here is on its way, that one... This one is on its way. This army's pure cavalry, so it'll move quickly, even though there's no roads. And when it gets there, group up, and I think I'll have an Egyptian town in my control zone. Oh yeah. Something I want is to make use of these wonders because they give really massive faction wide bonuses. Boni, whatever. Bonuses is the proper term, I'm sure. 20% bonus to farming income in all settlements. That's fucking massive. If your income is entirely farming, then that's 20%. Yeah, that's, that's big. And there's also this one here. There. The Colossus of Rhodes, 40% naval trade. Now, if you're playing as the Greeks and you get 40% to your naval trade, You've got Athens, Corinth, Sparta, um, Pergamon, all of these provinces. It's just ridiculous. Your income just becomes astronomical every turn. You don't have to worry about money anymore, pretty much. <laughs> you can accumulate an excess of like hundreds of thousands in, in a few turns. Okay, so we're inching towards... But here's a... yeah, this is really useful here. This panel, scroll, window. Oh, this province is quite pissed off. I might have to make a unit here, in case there's a rebellion. Damn it. Oh well, I'll just do it. Okay, I think that's everything that I can do. I've spent all my money. Well. Alright, let's continue. I'm bringing in about 1500 per turn. Um, land clearance or trader or governor's villa. This farm upgrade brings in about 80 per turn. Actually, I'm going to compare it. Trade goes up by 20, farming goes up by 80, so. And there's also the population growth, so farms win. Against, yeah, trader. I could make a governor's villa, but I still need to upgrade a lot, so not right now. 
land clearance or trader, this could be close. No, it's not. Damn it, I hate. I hate when I can't build because I don't have enough money. That's fucking shit. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this on very high until I get someone else in that's better at managing. Yeah, this is like sunk costs right now. This guy sucks. I'm just waiting for him to die. This one's very high. Yeah, likewise with this one. The income is more important than the population Order. growth for now. Okay. Out of moves, great lord. Oh yeah, I've got a spy and a diplomat here. I should have used them. Let's go towards... Alright, I'm gonna try and... I don't have any navies right now, which is a problem. I think there's a land bridge here I could cross, so I'm gonna use that. And this spy... My eyes are yours. Hasdrubal is pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna link up with with this army, the main army. Okay, that's everything again, I think, this turn. Wait. Can I afford to disband that unit? I'm gonna check. Yeah. No, I can. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Unlike in Shogun 2, there's no reason to let rebellions happen. It's just... Yeah, it's a lose-lose if you do that. In Shogun 2, it meant easy victories so your generals could rank up, but in this, in this game it's not, it's not quite like that. Okay. That's just about everything, if not everything, so I'm gonna turn. Oh yeah, I forgot. Damn it. Orders, march. Okay, that's that done. Moves depleted, mighty lord. Roads. Okay, this now has roads. That's good. Land clearance. I don't know how you pronounce this. Siwa. Siwa. I don't know. Um, roads, again. Better late than never. Especially in Total War. Okay, Mighty this general. army, inch closer. No more moves, oh, this faction, this province is green. <laughs> Yay. Also, I still have farms as well to buff happiness. I think that's a pretty good unit for um, for quelling rebellions, Numidian javelin men, because the upkeep is up, is nearly nearly the lowest, and also recruitment cost. So you can replace them as often as you want without incurring any kind of massive financial cost. Uh, this guy is only 15, come on hurry up. This guy's 11, this guy's 8, this guy's 2. So I'm gonna have a quick fire succession of up and coming generals for 3 and then there's 1 6 years later. That seems fair. I'll have one for every town. Oh, and there's daughters as well, so I can probably... Yeah, this one's nine. This one's five, this one's zero. Okay, this is good. Sire! Still no combat, but that'll change My soon. Liege. Nearly there. Onward. Do I have anything more to build or spend? Probably not. Oh. Okay, let's go. The Egyptians want trade. I will oblige. Do I want an alliance? Hmm. For money, maybe. Yay! I just extorted 500 for a, a sham alliance. That's good. Uh, 2200 that turn. Oh yeah, came of age. Good. Okay, this guy... This guy is a fuck up. Oh man. Plus one unrest. That's negated though by... No it's not. Yeah this guy is not a... Oh this guy sucks. Fuck. Oh he's only 16 though so I'm gonna have to use him. I don't have any 
I'm strapped for fucking family members as is, so screw that. Okay, he can have Lepsis Magna. Hmm. For a kind of sand locked faction in the middle of the desert, away from Rome and Greece, they can actually make some decent buildings, the, the Numidians. Public baths. Um, a foundry, the best blacksmith available. A port, they can only make one. They can only make the first level of ports. Oh my god, trade is gonna suck. Yeah, I'm gonna have to focus on farms. I don't know. It may be worth it to demolish those fucking milk art shrines and replace them with tannet ones. Um, the Ludus Magna. Oh, they can make academies. Oh, good. Okay, I'm gonna... Ludus Magna is my capital, that's where I'm gonna leave my 16-year-old fuck-up. Hopefully he can redeem himself uh, over time with my management. And I'm gonna send this guy with his massive bodyguard up there to die. Or at least do well before dying. Yeah, he can get some kills before he dies. Actually, wait. Yeah, minus one management. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. No, he doesn't have any retinue. Sire. I could have offloaded his shitty retinue to the faction leader before he goes and dies. <sighs> Does anyone know how you make the mouse smooth? Because in Rome to War, it's really... It feels weighted. It's quite a... Uh, I can deal with it, but it's annoying. Okay, let's piss off the Carthaginians. For Attack battle. our allies faction leader. Okay, this is going to be the first battle. I'm going to crush these guys. Here we go. The man who runs away will fight again. Take up your spears. Saddle the horses. Drink the last of your wine. Fate awaits us, soldiers. Fate has decided our destinies! Now set your minds to the task in hand. Mark your target, strike hard, leave the fallen, go forward with courage! That was a crappy speech. Oh my god. The Numidians got fucked when they were doing the script for yeah, writing speeches, they get fucked. Six units of Numidian cavalry, Jesus. 